They should be right. Okay. Uh, so uh, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, the last day of our workshop on RL from simulation and batch data. So uh, our first speaker today, uh, Chao Mingxie, is a visiting assistant professor at Cornell University in the School of Operations Research and Information Engineering. And before that, he spent two years as a postdoc at Leeds and MIT. And she has also been a research fellow at the Simon Institute, I think several years before. Mm -hmm. So uh, Chaomin has worked a lot on network theory, stochastic uh, analysis, applied probability, and recently she did very impressive work on theoretical reinforcement learning. Uh, should I get started? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mengdi, uh, for the invitation and the nice introduction. Uh, it's my great pleasure to speak at this exciting workshop. Today, I'm going to talk about recent work on reinforcement learning with unbounded state space. This is joint work with Dava Shah and Zixu from MIT. We know reinforcement learning is about the study of sequential decision making, where an agent interacts with possibly unknown system and the goal is to gain the long-term reward. Recently, it has achieved a remarkable empirical success in many applications. And meanwhile, there has been a lot of progress on the theory side. By now, we have a, a good understanding of algorithms for setting the finite or complex state space. However, for problems with unbounded state space, it, it is the much best understood. Uh, there has been some water considered such setting, but typically assumes the special structures. For instance, the, uh, it is the linear quadratic system, or the system has the low dimensional structure, such as linear feature space or has the later model. In this talk, I will focus on the unbounded state space setting, but without such structural assumptions. I will start with um, queuing examples to highlight the challenges here. And then I will introduce the uh, formulation and move on to our approach to tackle the challenges. And I will end the talk with some extension of our approach, including an adaptive version and a sample efficient version. Our interest in this setting uh, is the primary motivated by the classical scheduling problems for a queuing system. And a queuing model typically has the infinite the buffers leading to an unbounded state space. Here is just a simple example with single server and the two queues. Jobs arrive at each queue stochastically at some rate. And the server here we assume that at each time, the, the server can serve at most one job, either from Q1 or from Q2. If it is serving a job from Q1, then the job will leave the system with probability, uh, with probability mu1 at the end of the time slot. And the similar is the for, for Q2 here. For such a system, the states can actually be described by the vector of the Q lens here. And we can see the state space is unbounded with two dimensional non negative integers. And whenever the server becomes idle, it needs to make a scheduling decision about which queues to serve. So, in the language of MDP, we have the two actions here, either Q1 or Q2. And we are interested in learning uh, scheduling decisions purely from data without knowing the system's uh, dynamics. And the goal here is to find a policy that's optimized some uh, given the criterion. For instance, uh, minimizing average or discounted occurrence, which is a common goal in queuing literature. Reinforcement learning is the perfect framework for such a learning task. However, uh, uh, Due to the unbounded state space, directly applying existing reinforcement learning algorithm might not work. 
For instance, the one thing we can do is to try the classical offline training and then deploy approach. Uh, here means that you can run your favorite RL algorithms, say Q learning, and you will typically, you will do the training only using finite samples and then deploy to the learned policy without the further change in the system. Now, since do we only use the finite samples for simplicity, say the blue region here contains all the states visited during the training phase. And now we know for a queuing system with randomness, the systems will visit some states that are not observed in the training phase, say a yellow state here with some positive probability. And for such an unobserved state, the previously trained policy might not behave well. For instance, states might keep serving an empty queue while the other queue is large. Then the number of jobs starts accumulating in the system. So this is not the desirable. Therefore, online training is the necessary here. By online training, I mean we hope that the learning algorithm have the ability to update the policy whenever a new state is encountered. Another challenging is about quantifying how good an R algorithm is. Traditionally, we asked for a good performance over the entire state space. For instance, uh, the error metric in for value function is typically in R infinity norm over the state space. However, such a uh, metric is not feasible when the state space is unbounded, since the most of the states are never visited or they are far away from visited states. So there is no much information we can gain from the previous training. So we need an alternative to, to quantify the goodness here. To this end, we use the stability that's motivated by the queuing literature and the control theory. In the context of queuing system, you know, stability means the queue lengths are finite with probability one or equivalently, it means the underlying Markov chain is the positive story current. Finding optimal control is actually quite challenging for many queuing systems. So stability is usually a highly desirable goal here and it provide a first step towards the optimality in some sense. So inspired by this, we generalize the notion of stability uh, to, uh, from queuing systems to generic Markov decision process to quantify the goodness of algorithms. And similar to queuing system, intuitively stability here means we want to maintain the system states in favorable region. And as the approved or concepts, we uh, propose an algorithm that is uh, stable. And we can also characterize as the sample complexity. To formally state the results, uh, let me start with the setup here. We consider an infinite horizon discounted MDP. Uh, we unbounded the state space and the finite action space. Now, for a policy, a stochastic policy, that's the map each state to a distribution of action space we can define the Q function uh, as usual. And uh, similarly, we de uh, denote Q star as the optimal Q functions for the MTP here. Now, uh, let me uh, introduce the stability notion we are interested here. Informally, we want the stability to incorporate to two properties which are actually quite common in stable queuing systems. The first one is boundedness, which kind of like mimic finite queue lengths. So intuitively, it means that most of the time, the system stays in a bounded region here. Or in other words, the probability of visiting these small states is quite high. 
the second one is the recurrence, uh, which kind of like mimic the property of positive recurrence. Basically, it says if occasionally the system stays visit some states outside the blue region here, say a yellow state here, then it has the ability to recover from such undesirable states and returns to the attraction region within the finite time steps. So this is a high level idea about the properties of stability we hoped for. Now, based on the idea here, we can formally uh, defines the stability for policy. We will call a policy sequence here stable if it satisfies the following two conditions. Basically, just a mathematical expression of the two properties I just introduced. And it just means that with high probability, the system will remain in a bounded region here. And the for any state, the time to return to this bounded region, the expected time is actually finite. So if uh, you might notice that the definition here is actually quite similar to the standard definition of positive recurrence of time homogeneous the Markov chain. That uh, I want to point out the key difference here is we do allow the policy sequence here to be non-stationary, so in order to incorporate the learning on the fly. So the resulting Markov chain can be time inhomogeneous. So you can view our definition here is a generalization to time inhomogeneous the Markov chain for the notion of recurrence. Okay. So now the questions that we are interested here is how can we learn a stable policy purely from data uh, for such an unbounded space setting? Our approach is based on uh, Monte Carlo simulation and the search method. The key components in our algorithm is a uh, uh, Monte Carlo Oracle. So the Oracle will take a single state. So this is important. It will only take a single state as the input. And it will output a probability distribution over the uh, action space. So you can understand the probability dis distribution here as an approximated optimal policy or approximated policy for the query state S. And we assume that this oracle has access to a simulator. So meaning for each state action pair, we can generate the samples the next stage according to the transition kernel and the immediate reward. So um, I will come back to more details on the implementation of this Oracle later. Now with this Oracle, the overall algorithm, our overall algorithm work as follows. So starting from the initial state as zero here, at each time step, the algorithm will first query the MC Oracle to obtain the probability distribution of actions. And then it will take an action according to the suggestion and the system make a transitions to the next state. And then it will repeat this process. So basically the algorithm is quite simple. It's the key components, as I say, is the Monte Carlo Oracle. And which kind of like gives the suggestion about which actions to play for each single state uh, at a runtime. Now, ideally, we hope that the MC Oracle can give us the optimal policy for each query state but this is too good to be true. In reality, this is almost impossible without knowing the system model. So now our hope here is, what if the MC Oracle can outpost a policy that's close to the optimal one for each query state in some sense? 
And if the system is stable under the optimal policy, then the, maybe we are able to claim stability of the uh, approximate the policy sequence. And let's the hope here. Moreover, we uh, ideally, we want these MC oracles uh, to compute such an approximate uh, optimal policy for each query state by only using finite samples. Uh, as I mentioned, ideally we want this algorithm can be fully online. So if we can uh, obtain such an approximate policy by only using finite sample, then that is the uh, hope of uh, implementation. Uh, I will pause here uh, in case there's any questions about the algorithms here. All clear over here. Okay, uh, good. Now, let me continue. So as I mentioned, our hope here is the MC Oracle is can output the approximate policy by only using finite samples. And indeed, there's two or a methods that can serve this goal. One is the sparse sampling Oracle, and the other one is the Monte Carlo tree search. Uh, which has been widely used in many games, including AlphaGo and AlphaGo Zero, that's based human champion. So both the oracles consist of two main steps here. First, we are going to use the multi-step look-ahead simulations to estimate the optimal Q value for the query states S. And then the based on estimates the Q value, we will construct a softmax or so-called Bosman policy as follows. Here, the tau, uh, an important parameter is tau here, uh, typically is called the temperature parameter. So we can see if for high temperature tau, if we let tau goes to infinity, then the distribution here becomes the uniform. And for low temperature tau, for tau that is close to zero, then the policy here becomes greedy with respect to the Q function estimates. So it's kind of important to choose an appropriate tau that kind of encourages some exploration and the randomness. And the, from the overall approach here, we can see the key step is about estimating the optimal Q function for the query states. Due to time constraint, uh, I won't get into details here. So the high level idea of the estimation basically is you can think about this as multi steps to value iteration, but by using uh, simulations. And we only focused on a single state for the query states here. So that's different from the classical value iteration procedure. Now for the Q function approximation, for sparse sampling oracle, it has been shown that with proper parameters, the estimates can actually be close to the optimal Q function with high probability. Empirically, uh, MCTS is more efficient. And recently we are able to establish a rigorous the theoretical guarantee, which is as this as good as the sparse sampling. Now, with the guarantee on the estimated Q function, we can obtain an upper bound on the difference between the resulting softmax policy mu here and the optimal policy for a query state. So you can ignore the expression here. So the key message here is the upper bound on the policy difference can actually be small if we have a small arrow bound on the Q function and a small temperature parameter tau. Now, of course, a natural question here is how small the error bound should be in order to achieve the stability. And what's the correspond, uh, corresponding sample complexity per query for Oracle? Now, to answer these two questions, let me first introduce an assumption we need here. So suppose that the Markov chain under the optimal policy is not stable. 
in queuing system, it means the system load is above the system capacity and the server capacity. Then there is no policy can make the system stable and there is no hope of learning one. So the minimum requirements that we have here is the optimal policy leads to uh, a stable system or a positive recurrence to Markle chain. Now, on the other hand, it's well known that positive recurrence is equivalent to the existence of so-called the optimal function. So this motivates us to consider the following assumption here. We assume that for the Markle chain under the optimal policy, there exists the optimal function satisfies the two conditions here. First one, the possible change of the value of the Lyapunov function during any uh, transition is bounded by some constants. And you might be more familiar with the second condition here on the drift. It says for states such as the Lyapunov function is above some threshold B, then it admits a negative drift here. This type of assumption is actually quite standard in queuing and in control theory. Uh, indeed, such a upper function exists for many queuing systems. For example, the for the two server uh, two queue example we have seen earlier, it's well known that the optimal policy is actually uh, the so-called simian rule, and the Euclidean uh, norm of the states is actually a Lyapunov function that satisfies this assumption. And I want to point out that our algorithm does not need to know the exact Lyapunov function. So based on uh, under this uh, Lyapunov assumption, now we probably guarantee from the MC Oracle, the resulting policy sequence is actually stable. Uh, the stable is the notion we introduced earlier. So here, if strong corresponding to the arrow bound for the Q function from the MC Oracle. And again, tau here, the temperature tau uh, is uh, for the softmax policy. And the minus alpha here is the negative drift of the, the optimal function. So we can see basically it says, as long as the error and the temperature is small enough, then the policy sequence are stable. Of course, you might wonder without the knowing the system or the optimal function, how can we ensure the parameter that, that if stones and tau to be small enough? Uh, I will come back to this question later. Uh, so now we, when we have we set the temperature tau to be tau alpha, which is scales to uh, the drift of the optimal function in, in this order, then the sample complexity is actually finite. In particular, the sample complexity per query scales as follows. So now it's good that we have the stability results and we can, uh, the approximate the policy can be computed by only using finite samples. Um, I think, okay, I still have enough time to cover a little bit about the proof. Uh, so here I will briefly uh, discuss the proof outlines for the stability and the sample complexity results. Uh, it consists of three main steps. The first step is to show that the Monte Carlo Oracle uh, can actually output approximate near optimal policy with high probability. And we have done this for sparse sampling Oracle and MCTS. And the second step is to perform drift analysis for the Markle chain under the approximate the policy sequence. In particular, we can show that the Markle chain can admit a Lyapunov function that satisfies similar drift condition as the optimal policy. Of course, there will be different uh, constants. And based on the drift condition, then we will use a result by Bruce Tayak to finish the stability analysis. 
So now let me uh, come back to our results here. So as I say, in order to achieve stability, the parameter temperature tau should be small enough. And of course, in principle, we can use a very, very small tau. But notice that a small tau means the small arrow bound for the MC oracle. And intuitively, such a small error requirement will induce high sample complexity. So we want the temperature tau to be small enough, but not too small for, for efficiency. And the best choice is tau alpha here. That depends on the drift condition. And now the question here is, uh, without knowing the, the upper function or the drift condition, can we find a uh, proper value for the temperature tau automatically? So this is the first question. And another question is about the sample complexity here. Even with the optimal temperature tau value here, the sample complexity actually you can observe that is the super polynomial in one over alpha. So it becomes the highly inefficient when alpha is the small. So for you guys, if you are familiar with queuing system, uh, a small alpha corresponding to typically uh, corresponding to high load regime. And we know analyzing queuing system in this regime will allow us to understand some fundamental performance the bottleneck. So it's highly desirable to have an efficient algorithm for this regime as well. Indeed, uh, we have extension of our algorithms to handle both of these issues. Uh, in particular, we have a sample efficiency version that's actually based on uh, a more sample efficiency or MC oracle, such as the complexity now, instead of super polynomial, it become polynomial dependence on one over alpha here. And here D is the dimension of the state space. And for the, uh, uh, we also have an adaptive version that can discover an appropriate uh, tuning parameter tau automatically. And the key idea here is to uh, carefully construct the stat uh, statistical uh, hypothesis testing as the uh, rules to determine whether we should change the, uh, we should reduce the tuning parameter tau or not. Uh, due to time constraint, uh, I, I don't have time to get into details here. So let me wrap up here. Uh, we consider R for setting with unbounded state space and introduce the notion of stability and have an online algorithm that is stable. Uh, moving forward, that actually quite some interesting future directions. And so if you have seen that, so this one, even it's a sample efficiency version, we can see it still has an exponential dependence on dimension D. And to break the cost of dimensionality, it's important to explore a problem structure for function approximation. And another question here is, as in queuing system, stability usually is only the first step towards optimality. Then a natural next question is, can we develop algorithm that achieves the stronger performance guarantee? So that's all I want to say today. Uh, thank you all for your attention. And this talk is mainly based on two of our recent papers. I'm happy to take questions. Great. Any questions in Q&A? Uh, well, I guess I, I have um, a comment and a question. I enjoyed your okay. talk. It's uh, awesome. Um, the, uh, I mean, first is a comment. The, the boundedness of the increments of L uh, implies geometric ergodicity. I don't know if you noticed that, but it might be useful. Yes. Uh, yeah. use that, yeah. And the other thing is, if you double L, you double alpha. So how do you, how do you uniquely define alpha? So that's a very interesting question. Actually, uh, someone asked me about this question. And it turns out even if you cannot uh, proportionally scale the error, 
And then the, in, during the uh, from the analysis, you can see somehow these effects that was uh, uh, kind of like cancel out uh, from the analysis. Mm -hmm. And this means even if you scale the kind of like uh, the, the upper function, it doesn't help to use to scale the requirements for the troops. No, but what's the definition of alpha? Because I can always make alpha one. Whatever, whatever, whatever. If you give me a, a layout of function L, I'll divide it by alpha, and then my drift is always one. So okay, um, that's uh, a good point. Uh, yeah. I need to think of our race. Right, sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Other questions here? Maybe in interest of time, we could continue and then um, perhaps later for the panel discussion, if people want to yeah. see some questions. Okay. Thank you for the for the talk. Um, uh, Stefan, do you want to go ahead and try to share your screen? Sure. Um, well, Stefan gets... Uh,